morning. He's in New Zealand, so um, good morning to everyone in New Zealand. Uh, that's awesome. So we're going to talk about Longitudinal G. Um, first, I'm going to pull up the app, and we're going to pull up the Long G channel. Um, it's abbreviated L-O-N-G, uh, G. So in the app, we're going to see it as Long G. And that's going to represent longitudinal G-force. Um, so if you guys have any questions at any point, uh, just go ahead and ask them in the uh, comments. I'll do my best to respond. So longitudinal G-force, uh, pretty simple. How to view it, first thing we're going to cover. Um, hey, Marlon, welcome. So longitudinal G, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull up a data session. I have no idea how good you guys will be able to see this uh, on the app. My setup man, Baker, had to leave today, so he's not here. But we're looking at just a data session here, somewhere in here. Um, and what I'm going to do is use the ticker in the middle of the screen, and we're going to scroll down to long G. So on our home base screen here on the GPS satellite image, we just scrolled the ticker down to longitudinal G. Um, or I can basically do the same thing on my speed trace page. I can go down to long G, and we'll see it in you know graphical format. Um, on this page, Long G will be uh, represented on the uh, Y axis here, and the X axis down here will be, you know, feet, either time or distance down here. We can select that. So that's how we view it in the app. Um, you can also see it in Track Attack. It's a channel that's provided um, in Track Attack. Um, so, so pretty simple there. Um, you'll see longitudinal G, and it's a pretty common measure. So this is after looking at, you know, reviewing the replay of your apex lights and finding the corners where you have, you know, red lights under braking or cornering. Um, longitudinal G is usually kind of the next thing that we go to, um, the next thing that we analyze. So what is it? What is it a measure of? Um, so if you just joined, uh, talking about longitudinal G, specifically using it in the Apex Pro app, to help you understand more about your braking. Um, so longitudinal G, G-force, obviously we all know what that is. It's basically a measurement of the weight that our body's experiencing, right? So it's, it's very, very relevant for driving because it's um, representative of the weight transfer in the car. Um, G-forces are, you know, one G is equivalent to the amount of weight that gravity is pressing your body down onto the earth, right? Um, pretty simple, uh, sort of, I guess it's, uh, you know, can be complicated. So longitudinal G is basically that acceleration or deceleration in a linear, you know, in a straight line. Um, lateral G is going to be in the other direction, left or right. Um, so on the racetrack, longitudinal G is accelerating, hard on the accelerator, when your body gets thrown back into the car, and braking, right, which would produce negative longitudinal G. Um, so that's one thing that I'll write down here is negative. So negative values equal braking or decelerating, but we're just going to say it's braking because it usually is. Positive is going to equal accelerating. Um, now feel feel free to ask questions. Uh, I'll do my best to respond. I'm looking at the. Uh, the iPad here to try and see what uh, what people are asking. So I apologize if I don't get to one or something. Um, but this is what we're going to be looking at in lo with longitudinal G in reference to driving a race car. Um, braking and accelerating. Negative values are braking. Positive values are accelerating. All right. Um, so in the Apex app, what's important to know when we scroll down on the middle ticker of the app on that GPS satellite image, it's important to know that it's no longer going to be showing what the apex lights were showing us and colored in that way. Now it's colored by this, negative and positive. Negative is going to be red, positive is going to be green. That means neutral is going to be yellow. So neutral meaning relatively no acceleration, zero longitudinal acceleration. Um, so those are the things that we need to know about our uh, longitudinal G as far as how it's going to be colored uh, in the app, what we're looking for there. Um, yeah, that's pretty simple. Negative means we're braking. Positive means we're accelerating. Now, again, those aren't. This is general. That's not. Um, you know, uh, that's not always the case, right? We can achieve negative G by driving up a steep hill and letting off the gas and letting the car start to roll backwards, right, or decelerate um, on its own. 
Um, so it's important to know when we're looking at G that it's not a driver input. G-force is the result of the driver input. Um, so we can kind of correlate it with what pedal we're on and how to do that, but just think about it as the result. You did this with the pedals and you achieved this longitudinal G measure. Um, so we'll talk about that briefly. So how to view it, we looked at that in the app. Just look for long G in the app and that's how you're gonna be looking at longitudinal G. What is it a measure of? Again, we know G-force is a measurement of um, our body, you know, the weight that we feel experienced by the force of gravity. So one G is one times the force of gravity or basically something roughly equivalent to the force that's pressing us down onto the earth now. So what's important to know about racing is most street tires are not capable, out of the box street tires, your basic street tires are not capable of more than one longitudinal G, one more than negative one, positive one G. Positive one G is a massive amount of acceleration. Um, so one G under braking or there, thereabouts is kind of our ceiling for street-based tires. So if you have street tires on your car, um, you know, 200 treadwear tires, about 1G, some 200 treadwears will do more than that. Special tires, like um, tires that might be factory tires on something like a Viper ACR, Corvette ZR1, um, Porsche 911 GT3 RS, those types of tires are gonna be softer. Um, you know, Michelin Pilots uh, Cup sport type tires or, uh, you know, the Pirelli equivalent, those types of tires might be able to see over one longitudinal G. Um, so I can't see your questions. So if anyone's asking questions, I apologize. I will uh, do my best to try to, to try to get to a view where I can see those. Um, but yeah, so that's what negative long, longitudinal G is. So let's talk specifically about negative longitudinal G values. Um, and then we're gonna get into what we wanna see in long G and slow corners and fast corners. So now we know how to view it, we know what it's measuring. So what are we specifically looking at um, when we look at uh, uh, longitudinal G values in the app? John Gatos, welcome. Yeah, Tommy says the Miata doesn't do positive G very well. No, it doesn't. Tommy, I was, I was really uh, saddened to hear about um, the passing of your wife, so I'm uh, thinking about you, man. That's, that's tough, hope everything's good. Um, we'll get back to it. Sam Bensley's on here. John Gatos, Marlon. Got lots of folks. So you guys ask questions. I found a way that where I can actually read your questions. So uh, feel free to ask those. I'll pop back into the app real quick. So I've selected, uh, I was at Charlotte Motor Speedway this past weekend. Um, I've selected a really simple track layout so we can see longitudinal G. Now I've selected long G right here in the middle of the screen. And you'll notice the coloring is going to change so that now we're seeing green is positive acceleration, red is negative acceleration, orange is closer to zero, and yellow is basically zero acceleration. There's only one in the car we were in. It was a very, very lightweight car. It was a BMW E30. We were only braking you know, maximum at threshold once. Okay, And that's where we're going to be close to negative one. So I can tap the the app when I'm, you know, you can pull out your Apex app and do this with me, go to the Long G channel, tap the line, press and hold the black dot and you'll see the value of the G represented at that point expand. So what we're looking for in a corner like turn one at Charlotte Motor Speedway, um, that is a threshold breaking corner where we're going from high speed to low speed, is we wanna see the G value change from positive acceleration or green close to closer to yellow most of the time at high speed to red as soon as possible. So we're talking about a relatively slow corner here, but this is almost always the case. If we see the coloring on the app stay yellow or orange for a long period of time, that means we're coasting. Um, real simple. Um, so we don't want to see on the long G channel going into a corner we don't want to see orange or yellow for an extended period of time. We basically want to put as much load on the front of the car as soon as we can. So think about G as weight transfer, right? It's where the weight's going in the car. Negative G means weight's going to the front. Positive G means weight's going to the back. Um, so we're going to try and make that as, uh, as simple as possible to kind of conceptualize. Um, so when we hit the brake pedal hard, all that weight goes to the front. You know, red, red is going to be the color that we see when we maximize. So in a threshold brake corner, high speed to slow speed, 
we should see the line on our uh, on our GPS satellite image on long G should be red immediately. All right, that means that we went to threshold break as quickly as possible. As we approach the corner, specifically at turn in, that coloring should change so that we're decelerating at a slower rate. So the way to think about this is we can brake at our maximum when we're in a straight line because the tires are only committed to driving in a straight line. They don't have any lateral load. We can use the brake pedal to its maximum essentially. We can load the car to its maximum, put all the weight on the nose and slow the car down quickly. Now as we begin to turn the platform of the car, all the weight, all the G load is on the front tires. We want to even that load out before we ask the tire to load laterally. All right, so we want to even that load out before we ask the car to be loaded laterally. If we keep all that weight on the front, we're not going to be able to ask the car to do that. So from high speed to slow speed, we want to see maximum deceleration. That's red coloring on the GPS satellite image. We want to see that slowly transition into orange. And then around turn in, the color should be orange or yellow. And at or near the apex, we should see relatively neutral acceleration. So in your data, when you're looking in a relatively slow speed corner, you want to see basically red, orange, yellow at the apex of the corner. Does that make sense? If we see that, that means that we didn't break too early. That means that we were braking close to the car's limit, close to the limit of grip, and that we didn't get back on the power too early. Now, if you see the green coloring start before the apex, in a slow corner, you overslowed the corner. All right, that means you brake too hard, too early, kill too much speed, you're not at the limit of the tire, and you're able to accelerate too early in the corner. I gotta massage this to get back to my, uh... so pretty simple stuff. Slow speed corners, we wanna see relatively neutral longitudinal acceleration in the middle of the corner. I wish I, I think my phone is getting a call. Um, so that's what we're looking for in slow speed corners. Threshold braking, we want to see red representative of hard negative longitudinal acceleration. Then as we start to load the tire laterally, and remember we got all the weight on the nose, we're going to release the brake pedal and that's going to turn that longitudinal G line orange on the Apex app. So as far as G values go, our threshold braking is going to be around negative 1 G. By the time we transition and get the car into the corner, we should be at or below half a G or so. Um, longitudinally around half a G. So as you're looking at your own your own data, that's what you can look for. In the threshold break corner, do I achieve close to negative one G? Um, the data I was looking at from this past weekend, we were on a 200 treadwear car. It was a Champ car, series car, uh, BMW E30. We were doing a little over one G, almost 1.1 G in uh, negative uh, longitudinal G. And there's only one corner on the track where we did that. So. What we're looking at when we look at that longitudinal G channel, just because we're not seeing red doesn't mean that we're doing it wrong. Something else you can think about is fast corners. So slow corners and fast corners, we're going to segregate, uh, all right, because they're, they're essentially different because it's all about, we're talking about G load, we're talking about G forces, it's all about how we load the car, where we put the weight, and how we respect that weight. What's important to know about G-force, what is it a measure of? It's a measure of you know, the forces of gravity pushing you down on Earth, right? And that fluctuates with speed. So the higher speed we're going, the higher potential G we can achieve. All right, that's why fighter pilots wear G-suits and stuff like that, because when you're going 800 mile an hour ground speed and you pull the you know, joystick straight back into your, you know, into your and load the G and go straight up in the air, right? You're at super high speed. That creates an enormous amount of force. We all know force is increased with, with speed. Um, so fast corners are a little different. Threshold braking corners, slow corners, red longitudinal G initially. I right? want to see that red coloring on the GPS satellite image, negative 1G. Fast corners, totally different story. It depends on how much speed we're killing, but let's just say, for example's sake, we're taking off we're going from 100 miles an hour to 70 miles an hour. A lot of corners are that way. Medium speed corners. For sake of conversation, we're going to call that a fast corner. Um, another good example would be like turn one in mid-Ohio, turn one in Road Atlanta, turn six at Road Atlanta, turn seven at Barber. Um, almost all the corners at Charlotte Motor Speedway on the road course except for turn one. Um, they're very different than slow corners. All right. 
if that red coloring is representative of the the loading that we're getting with the car, the amount of G that we're that we're loading, we want to almost avoid the red coloring almost. It's okay to, to see red, it's okay to see a high G load, but just remember it's gonna be easier to produce higher G's at higher speed. All right, so that's why we can see that one G when we're going into a threshold corner. We hit the brake pedal hard at high speed that produces a lot of G load and that G load's gonna slowly start to relax as we begin to release the brake pedal and go into the corner. Remember, Gs are the result, not the input um, of what's happening. So we're talking about fast corners. As far as the coloring goes, we don't really want to see an orange, we don't really want to see, I'm sorry, red coloring on longitudinal G, meaning we don't necessarily want to achieve a high amount of G loading because if we slap all that weight over the nose and we got a lot more speed, a lot more momentum, all right, and we don't release it it's gonna be harder to balance the car for that lateral load that we have to give it. So nine times out of 10, if you ever have a spin in a fairly high speed corner, over 60 miles an hour or so, nine times out of 10, it's because we had too much brake while we were turning. Carried too much weight over the nose while we were turning and that created kind of this pendulum effect where the car started to slide. If you have access to a simulator, driving racing simulator, I've got one sitting right here, which is why I was doing that, iRacing or something like that, play around with that. The vehicle dynamics are, are representative of in the car. Go into a pretty high speed corner and trail brake it, right? Carry brake into the corner as you turn. In a fast car, in a high speed corner, that's a problem. And that's why we don't want to load all that weight over the nose. Um, now, again, I'm kind of being general. In a fast corner where we're going from, if we're in a really fast car, we're going from 180 miles an hour to 100 miles an hour different story, all right? We still gotta kill that speed as fast as possible, but anytime we have a, a relatively small speed gap, right, a, a small speed delta, say we're going um, into turn one in mid-Ohio, carrying 120 miles an hour, and we gotta go down to 95 to make the corner. 25 miles an hour is all we're trying to kill. Our goal is not late braking and brake as hard as possible, as it would be into a threshold brake corner. If we're only killing 25 miles an hour, our goal is to balance the car. So just think about it. If you're going to kill 25 miles an hour and you go boom and you get some of that red coloring on that GPS satellite image with longitudinal G and the nose of the car goes down like that, all of a sudden you're putting too much weight on the nose. When you add lateral G, that back end is going to want to come around. So totally different story in fast corners. Longitudinal G, what we're looking for in our data in fast corners is uh, basically consistency. So as we said, in slow corners, we wanna see relatively neutral G at the apex, that's similar, um, but we wanna see trail braking in slow corners. So I'm gonna do this. The key right here is gonna be trail brake. And trail braking is very, very, very important. There's so many definitions of it. I think it's ex extremely important to emphasize that sometimes trail braking, I know I have this misconception, trail braking, and when I would tell myself in the car I need to trail brake that corner to get the car to rotate or whatever, I would be actually adding brake as I, as I went into the corner. I would brake less initially and then have to add more brake as I'm turning and that makes the car really uncomfortable. Slow corners, trailing the brake means we are releasing the brake pedal as we're entering the corner. All right, releasing the brake pedal. And what I urge you to do is even if you're still building your foundation of driving, we're still learning some of the basics, Trail, trailing the brake is really, really fundamental and it's really simple. We brake hard initially and then we release the brake pedal. Even if you're going to a new track for the first time and you're braking super early, remind yourself to release the brake pedal as you enter the corner because it'll save you a lot of heartache down the road. Now what's different about fast corners, making sure I'm not missing any questions. What's a little different in fast corners is we don't trail brake as much. The faster the corner, the less trail brake and we need to rotate the car. The reason we trail brake is to keep some of that longitudinal G on the nose so that the car begins to rotate as we add lateral load. All right, so trail braking in slow corners, when we're talking about longitudinal G forces, we're gonna see a red coloring in the apex app, meaning hard deceleration, and we wanna see orange coloring, meaning we're still decelerating pretty hard as we enter the corner. In a fast corner, we wanna see orange initially, meaning we're not braking as hard. Now we're talking about a fast corner where we're not having to slow down a lot. We're, we're not in a Ferrari challenge car or a prototype. We're in a street car with a street tire. So we're going from 125 miles an hour to 95 miles an hour, something like that. 
still a fast corner. We want to be soft on, softer on the brake pedal, still get to maximum brake pedal initially, but we're only going to maybe use 20 or 30% brake pedal to stabilize the chassis because remember that little bit of brake is still going to put a little bit more load on the front of the car and our whole, our whole goal is to create a stable platform. Stability. So our goals as far as longitudinal G is concerned for slow corners is trail brake. We're okay if we rotate the rear tires a little bit. We're still going to be doing the same thing in fast corners, but just remember the reason we don't trail brake in fast corners is not because the physics are any different. The physics are the exact same. It doesn't require trail braking to get the car to rotate in fast corners. Like we said, G-force, it's a function of speed, right? The more speed, the more G we can produce. The same thing rings true all across physics. It's, it's always the same, right? When, you know, whoever got hit on the head by the apple or however that story goes, it's the same deal. The reason we don't trail brake in fast corners is because just putting a little bit of weight on the nose and starting to turn the wheel and creating lateral load, the car's gonna rotate easier because more force is generated at higher speed. I know that's a lot of information, but basically we have to trail brake to rotate the car in slow corners. We don't have to trail the brake into the corner in faster corners. Depends on the car, depends on how fast the corner, but that's in general pretty much entirely true. Turn 10 at VIR, South Bend, anybody that's been there recently, you carry trail brake in there and you end up backwards real fast. All right, we don't trail the brake in. Hey, Ryan, welcome. Appreciate everybody saying hey. Um, I think I'm seeing all the questions, but I uh, was going to try to cap myself to 30 minutes, so I'm right there. Again, guys, we were covering longitudinal G. To see it in the app, click into your data session. Use the ticker in the middle of the screen to select longitudinal G. So we'll go over that real quick. If you got the app right here, I'm going to go to data. I'm going to select my data session. I'm going to use this little ticker in the middle of the screen and slow and go down to long G. In the app, this is called long G, longitudinal G. Longitudinal G is a measure of G forces, but particularly in what we call the X axis or basically decelerating and accelerating. Negative is decelerating, positive is accelerating. Red coloring is decelerating, green coloring is accelerating. In slow corners, we want to see hard initial braking, meaning red longitudinal G-force, transitioning to orange coloring as we enter the corner with yellow coloring right around the apex. That represents relatively little longitudinal acceleration. In fast corners, we usually don't want to see that red coloring unless we're in a really fast car. If we're in a street car, we want to see like an orange or a yellow color, meaning that we're a little smoother and softer on the brake and more deliberate kind of with the control of the brake. And the key between slow and fast corners with respect to longitudinal G is in slower corners, we trail brake the car to get the rear tires to slide slightly at faster rate than the front to help rotate the car because we do not generate as much force in slow corners. Think about when you're going from 100 miles an hour to 30 miles an hour. You're parking the weight on the nose and as the car slows, that G, that weight, those fuzzy dice hanging from the mirror start to go back to the middle of the car, right? That's why we have to trail the brake in a slow corner. In a fast corner, you touch the brake pedal just a little bit and those fuzzy dice swing straight towards the mirror, right? Even just letting off the gas at high speed is gonna make the weight go to the front. So we don't have to trail the brake, we don't have to release the brake as we turn. We can basically get our braking done in a relatively straight line get out of the brake pedal as we turn, almost completely out of the brake pedal. Just remember the faster the corner, the sooner we want to get out of the brake pedal. Turn one at Mid-Ohio is real fast. We're almost entirely out of the brake pedal and maybe back to the power by the apex. Turn 10 at VIR, back to the power by the apex. Um, turn one at VIR, slow, slow, slow corner. We're trailing the brakes in there. Car's rotating around, using that brake pedal, releasing the brakes as we turn. Um, so again, negative G is braking, negative longitudinal G, positive longitudinal G is accelerating. The most important thing I think that we, took, that we hit on here is, uh, is longitudinal G is, is the result of accelerating and decelerating, or, or the result of using the brake pedal and the gas pedal. It's not representative of your brake input. Um, so just remember, if you don't see your longitudinal G go from green to red immediately in a threshold brake corner, that's okay because it still takes time for the chassis to 
and the tire to grip and everything to move forward over the nose of the car. Um, does anybody have any questions about anything? I probably have missed some because I've been trying to trying to follow along the best I can. Awesome. I'll save this video and it'll go up on our YouTube channel. So if you guys want to watch it again, I'll probably do this again and pull up the app a little bit more because I kind of struggled talking about some of the stuff that I wanted to talk about in the app. Um, we'll do that another time, but I think just having this stuff up here is important. It's, it's one thing to know this stuff and that's why we do this stuff consistently and we're trying to always continue to promote educating. It's one thing to know these things. Hey, I know I'm supposed to be releasing the brake pedal as I turn. But what we use data for is to confirm if we're actually doing it. The challenge to going fast is not just knowing how to go fast. It's knowing how to implement things so that we go fast. Uh, and how to check that we're actually doing those things. And that's what we use data for. Um, yeah, I feel pretty good about that. So in fast corners, our goal is to create stability. In slow corners, our goal is to use the brakes to help the car turn. Um, and if if we're able to, something else that's important, trail braking is releasing the brake pedal as we turn. If we're able to add braking while we turn, so say you go into a corner, you brake a little early, and you're adding steering, you get a lot of lateral load in the car, and you squeeze on the brake pedal more, and the car takes it, immediately we know we're not at the limit of the tire. Immediately. Um, so that's just something important to remember. If you're not being forced, the car should tell you it needs trail braking. Right, You'll feel it if you're going in late enough on the brakes, you're attacking the brake pedal initially. You'll feel that the chassis is, is really bound up while you're on the brakes and that if you turn the wheel too much with too much brake, it's going to swap ends on you or it's just not going to turn. Um, you'll feel it if you know what to feel, you know what to look for. Um, same thing in fast corners. Nine times out of ten, I said this and I'll say it one more time and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to go ahead and sign off. But in fast corners, nine times out of 10, if you spin or you have a sketchy moment, it's because you carried too much brake into the corner. You tried to brake too late, you forced yourself to carry. So in fast corners to create stability, um, most times when I'm coaching somebody, in March we were coaching, I was with Paul and, and Chris out at the WRL event, both great drivers. Something I really always struggled with in turn seven at Barber was not creating stability with the car. And they were both having that same problem where we would go in, have a sketchy moment. I was watching their video. I would see it on the apex lights that there are a bunch of red lights every time they go through there. And it was always because we were, and I did it for a little while before until I recognized it and was able to kind of coach them out of it, but they would carry too much brake into the corner. The previous corners turn five, which is a threshold brake corner where you can carry a lot of brake pedal and you have to because it's downhill towards the apex. Turn seven at Barber's a fast corner. It's 80 miles an hour basically for our car at the apex. Um, so carrying that brake as we turn and have lateral load creates a really sketchy moment where the car starts to swap ends on you and you feel like you need to counter steer. If you brake a little earlier and a little softer, and we're talking feet, right, 10, 15 feet, then you're able to roll more speed through the corner and the car is more stable and you respect the laws of physics more, right, which is what it's all about. Um, yeah. That's all I got. I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. I really appreciate you guys um, watching. We're gonna hopefully do another one of these next week. Look for uh, for people at the track, um, repping Apex Pro here in the near future. Let us know if you need anything. Remember lifetime warranty on your hardware. Uh, tell your friends about us. Um, make sure that everyone you're with goes to the track, knows um, what we're doing and how we can help people become better drivers. And that's what we're here to do. I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. Thanks again.